the bell icon to turn on notifications. Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial video on Microsoft Forms. Now, Microsoft Forms is probably the best small application that you've never heard about. It's often overshadowed by its flashier cousins in the Microsoft 365 suite, and it's easy to forget that Forms even exists. So what I plan to do in this tutorial is to give Forms some much deserved love and find out what it can do for us. Now, it's worth noting that Forms is available to everyone that has a Microsoft 365 account. So this includes those subscribed to the business plans, the enterprise plans, so E1, E3 and E5, and even those who just have a personal Microsoft account. And basically at its core, Forms is an application to collate feedback. It allows you to create shareable surveys, polls and quizzes in minutes, and it also allows you to track responses and provides real-time results and analytics for your survey. Now, one thing I'd like to point out here is that recently Microsoft has released an advanced version called Microsoft Forms Pro. And this version allows you to integrate with your company branding, set up workflow automations, and also integrates with Dynamics 365. Now, I'm not going to be covering any of those features in this tutorial. We're just going to cover the basic Microsoft Forms that you get when you open up 365. And that seems like a good place to start as much as any. You can see on the screen, I am logged in to my Microsoft 365 account. So jump onto office.com, log in with your credentials, and then from the dashboard, where you can see all of your applications listed down the side, click on all apps at the bottom and you should find in here you have a link to forms. So let's click to jump into it. Now, if this is the first time that you're using forms, then you're going to find that your home page is going to be reasonably sparse. So this new area is where you come to create a new form, a new quiz or select a template. And if you want to see the full range of templates, you do have a more templates button over on the right hand side. If you click that, it's going to give you a few more options. You'll also see just underneath there, I have a recent forms list and you can see that I created a summer party survey a couple of days ago. So if I wanted to load that up, make changes, maybe reuse it, I could do that from here. But we're not going to do that. We are going to create a brand new form. And just above, we have the option to do just that. So let's click it and jump into our new form. So the first thing I need to do here is give my form a name. So let's call this Christmas party. I can add a description if I want to. I'm not going to at this stage just to save a bit of time. And what I could also do is insert an image just to add a bit of interest to this form. So let's just type in Christmas party and see what we get. This is doing a Bing image search. So I'm just going to click on this one here and click on add just so you can see how this image is used. Once I've done that, I'm basically straight into creating the questions that I want to appear on my form. So right underneath, we have an add new button. Let's click it and see what we get. Now, what you'll see is that you have a choice of different question styles. And there are actually seven of them, even though you can only see four listed on here. If you click the drop down, it opens up three more hiding in this little menu. So let's go through each of them. So the first one here is choice and the choice option lets you add multiple choice questions with as many answers as you wish to include. You can also choose if the respondent can provide multiple answers and if a question is mandatory. So let's type in a question. I can now start adding in different options that I want them to be able to choose between. Now, by default, I only have two options. If I want to add a couple more, I've got an add option underneath so I can add in a third choice and let's add in one more choice. And if you want to have an option that just says other, you can add an other option right at the bottom. I can then specify if I want them to be able to select multiple answers by toggling on this little setting and also if this question is mandatory. Now I'm going to leave both of those toggled off and then I'm going to click add new. So now I'm straight into adding my second question on my form and this time I'm going to choose text. Now the text option allows respondents to answer your question with a free text response and they can basically type anything into this field. So let's type in our question 
And that is basically it. Now, with all of these questions, you can also add an image. So if you want to maybe illustrate your question a little bit more, you have the option to insert media at the end of each question. And this one, they're just going to be able to type in. Now, if I feel that the answer to this question is going to require a particularly long response, I can choose to toggle on long answer, which gives them a little bit more room to type. Let's click add new and check out the third question type that we have here, which is rating. So this allows you to ask a question and then the respondent can select a rating. And you can have a star rating or you can have a number rating. Now I'm going to stick with star and I can also choose how many stars I actually want. So maybe I want them to rate one to 10. I could add 10 stars. And once again, I can choose if this question is required or mandatory or if it isn't. Let's add new again and take a look at the date question type. So this is for date responses. So an obvious question here would be, and that is pretty much it. So the respondent's answer is going to be in the form of a calendar selection. Now, one thing that's worth remembering is that at any point you can preview what your form is going to look like when you send it out by clicking the preview button at the top. So if I click preview, this is what it's going to look like. So I could select dog and bear pub. I could type in my text answer. I can rate the organization skills and you'll see if I click here, I can choose a calendar date. Once you finish previewing, click on back to go back to editing your form. Let's add another question and this time we're going to go into that drop down and take a look at ranking. Now this is useful if you want respondents to be able to rank answers in a specific order. Let's add our answers. And what you'll notice is that if we preview this particular question, what it allows people to do is basically click and drag these answers into a specific order. And you can see as I hover over, I've got these arrows, which allows me to move different options down, or I can drag and drop and put these in the order that I would prefer. Let's go back and add in another question. We're going to dive into that menu and we're going to add a Likert question. Now we're probably all used to seeing these types of questions. I know that I've filled them out on many different forms. This is where you have various different statements and then you can rank them on a scale. So a question I might have in here would be, how would you rate last year's version? And then I can have different statements. So maybe I want them to rate based on the food, based on the bar, the parking and the staff. And then I can enter in a scale. So I might have poor, okay, good, very good and excellent. And that is what that question looks like. Let's preview and scroll down and you can see here they can go in and select whichever options they want. So that is your Likert question. Let's click on back and scroll down, add another new question. And this is the final question type that you have, and that is net promoter score. And again, I'm sure we've all seen these on forms previously, or even on websites when we filled out different surveys. This is where you have a ranking from zero to 10. Let's type our question. And that is pretty much it. So those are all the different types of questions that you can have when you're putting together a survey in Microsoft Forms. Now, aside from adding these questions, there are several kind of general options that you have for each of the questions. So if I click on this first one, you'll see at the top of every question, we have four little icons. So this first icon here allows you to copy this question. So if I click this, you can see now I have a copy. I can go in, I can change the question and even change the responses if I want to. The next option along is delete, so I can delete this question out. And then I can also choose the order of the questions by reorganizing these. So if I want to move this question down and make it question number two, I can use those arrows to do that. And you'll see these consistently across the top of each of your questions. Now, once you have all of your questions in your form, you might want to change the theme so it looks a bit more in keeping with the actual survey. 
In the top right hand corner we have a themes menu where we have a number of different ideas, things that you can apply or you can choose just a solid background fill. So I could have just a purple or a green or I could go for something a little bit more exciting by choosing one of these predefined themes. You can even use one of your own images. So if you have a particular image of your team that you want to add, you can upload an image from down here. And that can be an image that you've got stored locally or in a OneDrive cloud storage folder. Now, once you've set up your form and you've got it looking exactly as you want it to look, you're going to want to send this out so that people can complete it and you can start collating that feedback. So in the top right hand corner, you have a big old send button. So let's click that. And then you have some different ways that you can send this form. Now, the first thing forms will do is it will create a shareable link for you. So if you want to paste this link to this form into an email and send it out that way, that's absolutely fine. Or maybe you want to paste it into something like Microsoft Teams so that people can just click and they're automatically linked to this form. If you do want to do that, just click in this field to select the shareable link, click on copy and then just paste that into your relevant emailing application. We also have some other options. So if we click this one, recipients can basically scan the QR code onto their phone in order to access this form. You can see the embed code. So if you want to embed this form into an HTML web page or maybe something like a Sway, there is the code that you need to copy. And then finally, you have the option to email directly from Outlook, and that's going to open up an Outlook email for you with a link to the form. You could also share this as a template so that it can be reused by others with just some of the information changed. So I've sent this form out to a group of people and what you'll see is that when people start responding in the response tab at the top, you'll start to get this little notification. So I can see that one person has responded. If I click on this tab, I can see their responses and I basically get a little overview of how that person has responded. And obviously the more people that complete this, the more accurate this is going to be. So this gives me a really nice little analytics area where I can go in and really find out what it is that people want. I even have an option here to open this up in Excel if I want to do further analytics on this data. Now, the final thing that I want to highlight to you when it comes to creating forms is the settings that you can adjust. Now, there aren't many of them in Microsoft Forms, but you will find them just underneath these ellipses, the three dots in the top right hand corner. So I'm not going to go through all of these, but a couple I might point out here. You can see that I am choosing to accept all the responses, which is correct. I can choose to shuffle the questions around. Maybe I want to be notified via email every time somebody responds. And I could even create a customized thank you message. And if I click that, I can then maybe choose to put something down here like so make sure you come in here and take a look at those different settings. And the only other one that I would highlight in here is printing your form. So if you want to print this out, you have a print option just here. So that is how you create a survey or a form in Microsoft Forms. Fairly straightforward. Let's jump back to our forms homepage. So now that I've created that form, you can see it listed under recent. If this is something that I utilize all the time, it might be that I want to add this to my pinned list which means it will now appear under pinned and it will stay there no matter how many different forms I create. So it just makes it super simple to access. Now, the other option I have in here is to create a new quiz. And I'm just going to call this Deb's quiz. Again, I can enter a description, click on add new, and I pretty much have the same choices. So quizzes are very similar to surveys in that way. And that is pretty much it. It is a reasonably straightforward little application. But if creating surveys to collect feedback is something that you do reasonably frequently, it is nice to have an application built into the Office suite that you can just jump to super quickly from your Microsoft 365 dashboard. And everything, of course, is integrated with the other Microsoft applications. I hope you found that useful. That's the end of this tutorial. I will see you in the next one. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To get four free courses in Excel, QuickBooks, Microsoft Project, and Photoshop, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.